Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making motors. With some fun experimentation, we're gonna leave things spinning, twisting, bouncing, and even sparking. The materials you need are actually pretty basic and very easy to get a hold of, and the project itself is actually really pretty easy to conduct. Stick with me through the whole thing because this is actually three videos in one. We're gonna make three different types of motors and some different variations on each, starting with this basic homopolar motor. All you need is a battery, a screw, a neodymium magnet, and a wire. Hook them up like this, and that whole thing at the bottom starts to spin around. I'm merely winding this wire around the pen just so I can shorten it up and adjust the length a little bit easier. I'm gonna take this and loop a little piece back and tape that to the top of the positive end of the battery. That makes it a little bit easier to work with the other end because it has a large flat surface. So right now I'm taking a flat head screw and I'm taking a couple small neodymium magnets and sticking them on that head of the screw and then putting the screw point first to the flat bottom side of the negative terminal on the battery. You touch the wire to the end and as soon as it hits that magnet, it's gonna start to rotate. But I think we can dial this in a little bit more and have some more fun. I made this battery mount out of PVC. I basically just put a hole in the top so I could put my battery through and then I hooked up an alligator clip to that positive lead through the top. This whole setup is gonna leave us hands free, which makes this all balance out much better. I'm also taking a much bigger neodymium magnet and we can't use the alligator clip to touch the magnet because that will stick to it. So we need a piece of copper wire to stick in the alligator clip, which we can now touch to the magnet and make this whole thing spin much faster. Have fun experimenting. Bigger magnets, bigger screws. Just balance out the magnetism to the gravitational pull to make sure that that screw will still stay stuck to the battery. The point of the screw itself actually works like a bearing to help it run and spin smoothly. Here I'm trying a bigger screw, actually a little bit longer screw, but you can also flip the magnet around if you want it to spin in the opposite direction. I also highly encourage you to wear safety goggles when doing this particular part of the process. In case something goes flying off, you want your eyes protected. See what I mean? That actually could have shattered the magnet and sent little pieces flying. Moving on to our second simple homopolar motor, we're taking a battery again with a similar magnet and the wire, but this time we're gonna make that wire rest on top. When it touches the magnet at the bottom, the wire itself is gonna spin. This will allow you to have some fun with creativity coming up with different shapes and sizes of the wire and its configuration on top of the battery. But for now, we're gonna start simple. We're gonna take this section of copper wire and make a little point that sticks straight down into the flat surface of the battery when we're ready. We just need to make sure that there is copper wire exposed in that middle section because that's gonna be our electrical contact point on our negative lead of the battery. With the rest of the wire, we're gonna bend both sides so that they're exactly the same. They're gonna mirror each other as they gently come down the sides of the battery, a little bit wider than the battery, but settle just below the bottom. We're gonna then bend the two sides in to form kind of a feet-like representation on the wire, which we are then gonna spread apart so that one side is on one side of the neodymium magnet and the other is on the other side of the magnet. Then when we're ready, we will set this on top of our battery and magnet setup and watch it spin. The electricity running through the wire works like an electromagnet, which is actually attracted to the permanent magnet. This setup allows you to convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy, or in this case, spinning. And the reason that they call these two types of simple motors homopolar motors is because the electrical polarity actually does not change through the course of operation of the motor itself. You'll notice here with the two feet a little bit farther away from the magnet itself, the electrical current does not flow smoothly, so its rotation is rather weak. But we can address that as well. You can choose to tighten those feet in a little tighter on the magnet, or you can dial it in and come up with a different design entirely. I've had fun playing around with different shapes and designs, but I think my favorite by far is this coil setup. Not just because of the way it looks, but because of the way it reacts. You'll notice right away, it's not only spinning, it's bouncing and hopping around. All that bouncing and hopping around actually causes some intermittent contact changes between the battery and the wire and the wire and the magnet. That ends up resulting in sparks. Turn off the lights and you'll see exactly what I mean. The other thing too is I have this on a padded surface right now, 
but if you put it on a solid surface, you're going to get a lot of thumping and banging noise too, which is actually kind of fun. So if you want to make the coil, check this part out. All I did was I grabbed a highlighter, I took about three feet of wire, I stuck one end up underneath the cap so that, that would hold it in place, left a couple of inches loose at the end so that I could work with, but used the rest of it to make a tight coil wrapping one piece right next around the other so that I could create kind of a spring-like reaction when I take it back off the highlighter. When you're done, you want to bend a piece of that wire back towards the middle and make a U at the bottom of that that arcs down and points right down the middle of your coil. We're going to use that to rest on the battery. Then test the fit of your coil over top of the battery itself and compress or expand the coil as needed so that it gets to be the right length. Then what we're going to do is take the other end and bend the last coil in a little bit so that the exposed part of the wire can touch the magnet. That will cause the rotation which will then start to cause the coil to bounce. In this particular case, I've actually got the bottom piece of wire touching the surface, which limits the bouncing a little bit and makes it spin a little bit slower, but on a solid surface, makes a louder noise. When you're done, you can safely store your coils by taking a little piece of paper towel or napkin, rolling it up and sticking it inside the coil, and then put the coil inside of something solid. Now we can move on to motor number three. We're going to create another coil, but this time we're going to make it a little bit more like a donut because we're going to wrap the wire on top of itself. We're going to do that about 10 times for this first one. Then you want to take the loose ends on each side and wrap them in and around to help secure everything in place. As you can see in this graphic, we're going to create a platform to hang this coil over top of the magnet and then add our battery, which will cause the entire coil to rotate freely. There's a lot of different ways you can experiment with this setup, but for the first example, I'm going to use a little bit of magnet wire. The first two motors, we had a constant flow of power from the battery itself, but this time we're going to actually sand off the ends of the wire here, except on one side, we're only going to sand off half of it. In other words, half or one side of that piece of wire. You'll see why that's important in just a second, but the key thing here is whatever you use for your support brackets needs to be able to conduct electricity. I used safety pins that did not have a coating on them, then I hooked them up to the power and put a magnet underneath. A little tip, if you accidentally sanded off too much of the coating from your wire, you can use a sharpie to make a line on it to coat part of that side back up again which will interrupt the flow of electricity, and that's important to get this effect. This whole little coil here is an electromagnet and it has a positive and negative pole. The thing is, when it spins to one side, it's going to repel from the magnet that's at the bottom, but when it spins to the other side, it's going to want to stick. By interrupting the power, it allows the momentum to keep it spinning around without permanently sticking in the down position. Now, just like in the other ones, it's time to experiment. You can play with the configuration of the stand and the supports itself, or you can even go to bigger wire like I did here. In fact, I'm using T-pins to hold it in place, which gives it a little extra stability, and I tried a different approach. I'm just scratching off a little section of the wire on one side, and that will allow us to interrupt the flow of power so that when we hook it up and give it a little push, this is what you get. Notice I used some tape here to stabilize the magnet, and that's very helpful, but you can use hot glue also. Another thing to point out is that you really don't want to go for 1.5 volts with this because it's actually going to start to generate heat in both the battery and the wire. In fact, if you run it for more than 10 seconds, no matter what the battery is, it's going to start to do that. What I've done here is I've switched the terminal connection so that we can reverse the flow of current. This way, if we try to spin it in the same way it was going before, you'll notice it eventually stops and then spins back the other way. You may also note that I'm running two AA batteries here, and after running this little motor for a while, that red wire got pretty hot. I've had a lot of fun experimenting with these little motors, and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching. Please press like, and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.